So if you haven't heard already, next year's 14 was released like two days ago but it actually came with no new features or no new APIs. That means if you compare it to the previous version, Next.js 13, and what it brought and the breaking changes that it actually brought to the whole Next.js ecosystem, Next.js 14 is just more of like a unified release that actually brings a couple of features that makes them stable, but with little to absolutely no breaking changes. So many of the features in here that are actually brought by Next.js 14 is actually Turbo Pack now has like my for like 5,000 tests passing and actually like 50% faster for local server startup and like 90% faster update with fast refresh for like development, of course. But still, Turbo Pack isn't, isn't like completely supported right now in Next.js. So you can't use it for production or anything like that. It's still in beta. The only cool thing that I'm super excited about is actually these server actions here now are finally stable after so long and after so much enhancements and, and new things and bug fixes around that one. They are finally stable next to US 14. Now you can basically use server actions inside of your client component, server component, vice versa. You use SQL inside of server components or your client component, React components. There is so many combinations you can actually try and work with. Another really cool feature in here that I'm super excited about is actually the partial pre-rendering, which is still in preview. That means it's more of like still in heavy development, but this will actually make your Next.js applications so fast, like it's gonna do first initial static response and it's gonna basically streamline your dynamic contents as the page loads. And last but not least, there's actually a new course coming from Next.js, which is Next.js Learn, which is of course for free. And it actually has a lot of cool stuff from like, you know, app router, authentication, databases, and a lot more. Now, if you have been on Twitter for the past couple of days, you should have probably already noticed some huge debate regarding server actions in the new Next.js release. And particularly, there was actually a slide during the next, like Next.js Conf or the conference. The slide had something like this, it had this, this code snippet in here, where there's actually a functional component here, like a bookmark that takes a slag, and it basically returns a bookmark button, and it uses this new API, it's called form action for server actions from Next.js, that allows you to immediately execute like a server side function right inside of your like client side component, where the user can click on the button and it can actually get, can get this particular function in here executed in the Sith server. Now, the whole debate actually started just because of this SQL query in here and the potential or the risk of being able to have this slug in here and actually do SQL injection. So in my opinion, it might actually seem this is like a little more weird and, and it could potentially have like the risk of having SQL injections for this one. But for some of you, for like the JavaScript developers who know a little more about tag template literals, like the ones that are used right now, not like regular strings or quotes, more of like tag template literals, like ES6 tag template literals, they would probably know how those work and they would probably know a little more of how this could be safer and not having like SQL injection risks. So to better understand server actions, and have I gotten here like a really simple example that uses the latest stable Next.js release of server actions. And this is just basically a to-do list, but actually behind the scenes uses Prisma and uses a Postgres database running on Docker. So this is simply what it is. So what it looks like in here, so you can actually go ahead and uncheck or check those to-do lists and actually you can have them. All of the changes actually you make right over here are gonna be saved right into the database on like, you know, the Postgres database using the Prisma ORM. Now, for example, in here, let me just, you know, go to delete that. It actually deletes that if I add like new thing in here, like, oh, make coffee or something. I click on that, click enter. It's gonna add this new make coffee and so on and so forth. Now, to see better that and how basically everything works behind the scenes, to better understand of how everything works behind the scenes in here, I have this like running on my, you know, code sandbox in here. And for server actions, I have like a file called actions.typescript that actually has all my server actions. And of course, for every single server action, it's just a simple function that exports, you know, an asynchronous function in here that has some interaction with the database. Now, I'm using Prisma set before, so Prisma is initialized and connected with our Postgres database that is running on Docker. And simply in here, for example, for inserting a new to-do, you take the constant of the to-do in here, you use Prisma to-do create, which is, of course, you're basically, when you do that, you're simply just interacting with the database directly. It's basically like running 
you know, the SQL query, what we saw before, like, you know, insert into, you know, instead of bookmarks in here, we do to do list, and you can just have, you know, the, the content and everything. That's basically the same thing, right? Because we're basically grabbing the content in here from the parameters. And of course, this is actually going to be passed through from the actual client side react component later on. So it's going to be just like adding that one revalidating the path so we can refresh the cache and actually display the new to do list that we were added. The same thing goes for, you know, the delete, delete to do in here when we delete or for, you know, set checks in here. So we use the update method, which is just simply SQL query updates. And you just simply just go ahead and update whatever in here and you just revalidate the path again. Now that's simple what it is. Now, if you look into more of how these actually working, so for example, we got the to-do list in here. So for example, we get like the to-dos in here. So it's basically we're doing like to-dos, you know, find many. That's basically the same equivalent of doing something like this, where you have like to-dos equals Prisma and you do query role and you just simply use select all from to-do table. You know, that's basically the equivalent. So doing this is just like the same thing as doing right in here. So simply just doing this is the same equivalent of doing it like a row SQL query in here, which is of course, again, the same thing that was happening inside of that, you know, slide in the conference. But the thing that a lot of people are not really familiar with is whether when you pass in here a variable or parameters, or whatever, and we just simply pass in the to do's in here to the to do's list. Of course, if we access to do list, that's the same thing. We just do a map and render every single to do item. And of course, for every single to do item in here, we're just grabbing our server actions that delete to do and the set check to do. And whenever he clicks on the input, of course, this is a client component, remember, and you can integrate those server actions inside of your client component here. So on click, you can do set checks to change the status of the you know, to do list or the delete to do. And that's simply the same thing that goes for, you know, add to do form in here, we have add to do, which is simply using a form with an action of add to do, and we just like to do add to do. And this basically uses the insert to do, which uses Prisma behind the scenes to add the new to do to the database. I mean, everything is good and everything works pretty well. And this will give us something like this, where everything works behind the scenes inside of the server and only like renders the HTML and sends it back for the majority of time for server components. I'm not talking about client components. Now, for instance, let's take, for example, the same example we saw on the conference slide in here, which is, you know, the bookmark component that returns a new button that allows you to do like a direct SQL query for inserting into bookmarks table with a slag. And it just like grabs the slag input that you provide and actually receive from the bookmark input in here or bookmark component basically through the props. And you just insert it right into the database. Now, why this isn't really that bad? Now, if you think this actually could have the risk of having a SQL injection, you are probably wrong. Let me tell you why. So you see this SQL function in here, which is basically a function that's going to actually execute your SQL queries. And as a parameter, it takes the template strings array. That means it simply just takes a template literal, like this is what a template literal where you call actually where you don't call the function, but you just like you do function name in here and you provide the tagged template literals in here, those little teeny tiny back tricks in here, and you just provide the whole query that you want which is basically going to be replaced on this template strings array. And of course, whatever parameters are going to be provided here are going to replace on the second. Half. So that's simply what it is, right? And of course, the method in here should go ahead and, you know, do the connection or handle the connection with the database and actually run the query and insert the data into the database. And most importantly, you should take all the parameters you have in these arguments, those parameters actually you pass in the tag template literals, and you should basically escape them for the potential of the risk of having, you know, SQL injection, it should basically escape all the variables that could, you know, potentially have any SQL injection or, or SQL kind of like special syntax or anything to avoid the SQL injection. So that means there is literally no risk for having SQL injection because everything is going to be escaped behind the scenes. And of course, this all depends on the library or the ORM you use for, you know, the SQL connection is running the SQL queries against your database. So for example, if we take Prisma as our ORM in here, so Prisma has a section in their website in here when you try to run, you know, raw queries or raw SQL queries in here for SQL injection. So it's basically telling you Prisma client escapes all variables when you use tag templates and sends them queries as prepare statements. So that means it's basically going to mitigate all the risk of having SQL injection. Now, if you're wondering about upgrading from next year's 13 to 14, it's basically as simple as possible. I have my portfolio in here, which is production ready website that I've been using a lot. And I actually want to try to upgrade. I was surprised of how simple what that was. All I needed to do basically just like go ahead and change or install the latest version from 13 and install 14.0.0. And that's it. 
And if you simply just look at the blog post in here, it has some breaking changes and deprecations. They are just very, very small change, you know, Im image response in here on the next image response or removing wasp in here, which you're not going to be caring about more, or you're basically like, you know, no GS version in here from now the minimum is node 18. So basically there isn't a lot of breaking changes and you can easily migrate to the latest version. They've also released an open source and new font to the font they have actually been using. So they basically open source the two versions, like the default and the mono version in here for both of those. And basically, of course, you can you can check, you know, the font in here, it has a lot of parameters, it has a lot of glyphs, everything is really, really well made up. I'm basically, you know, if I have my next side project, I'll probably just, you know, go and opt for this particular font because it's really, really cool. And last but not least, if you are actually a big fan of Next.js and want to learn more about it and actually master the whole Next.js, you can go to nextjs.org forward slash learn to access the new course launched by the Next.js team in here, which is a very, very cool course in here. There's actually a lot of chapters, a lot of stuff to learn more about from like, you know, CSS styling to optimize fonts, navigation, static site rendering, so much more, like literally everything you would need for Next.js. So if you're a big fan of like reading, reading tutorials, this course is basically for you. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This has been Next.js 14 and see you hopefully in the next ones.